Welcome to Wild Ginger's Urban Homestead. We're gonna take a little walk through of the garden and I'm gonna show you what's going on. Um, these flower pots continue to push out flowers, but they just look dead as, as dead could be. This summer savory has just done remarkably well. I have never grown this before. It was easy to start. It's grown way faster than my rosemary. I actually have a rosemary plant out here in the garden that I'll show you um, so that you have a size comparison. The oregano is starting to creep, which is awesome. That's kind of what I wanted it to do down here and uh, just let it take over this space. The parsley's have recovered really well since I cut them. I knew they would because I left a couple um, stems on them way down at the base. So I'm gonna actually let these grow up really tall and then I'm gonna do, uh, do that again maybe once more before the fall. The chamomile is hanging on for dear life. It, I have stopped harvesting off of this because I wanted it to reseed itself and you can see actually some of the little seed heads falling. Um, this parsley as well has grown back, as well as the thyme. And the oregano is not spreading out as well in this bed, but that's okay because this bed has a little bit more stuff growing in it. The beans are climbing. They've actually, many of them, reached the very tippy top of this trellis. We're having issues now with ants. So it seems like only the noodle beans back here are being affected by the ants. The other beans on this um, front row are not being touched by them. I'm assuming that that is a variety issue. Last week I talked about how um, I had basically just given up on my Cocazelle zucchini and grouped it in with the Burgess buttercup squash. And then it surprised me. <laughs> I have one very oddly shaped but very healthy looking zucchini. I don't know what I did. I counted a small success that I just even got one zucchini off of this thing. I think I need to work on my squash game. My little uh, Burgess buttercup squash babies are doing good. Hopefully we'll be able to get a harvest off of those before the frost. I'm sure we will. We have such a long growing season. Liam's little pumpkin is uh, going to town over here. It's starting to turn orange. It's got his little name I etched in it for him. He's going to be really excited to find that if he hasn't already. I think that if this was to set fruit now, the fruit might not be mature by the time Halloween comes around. If any fruit does set, we'll just eat it like a zucchini. We'll take it off young from the vine and eat it like a summer squash. I actually topped off all of these tomatoes because I wanted them to stop focusing on growing themselves up taller. I wanted them to work on ripening their fruit. Um, and I have another round of tomatoes in the ground already. I want those fruits to ripen so that they can be done getting processed through the kitchen before all those little cherry tomatoes come through. Look at that cute little pepper hanging out. So the bell peppers, this um, King of the North bell pepper has been really awesome for me. So um, I, I think I will go and buy some seeds. It's just bearing big, big peppers and I don't think I've seen any rotten. Pruning seemed to work on these. They are actually setting more fruit um, and they're pushing out more, more suckers. This Red Beauty gave us one pepper and after that, it just keeps dropping fruit. So I don't know if maybe my pruning was too heavy for it. I'm just gonna come back later and mess with that. The poblanos are ripening a lot better. Um, they're actually coming to a much larger size. Jalapenos are continuing to produce. They're, it's just loaded. I don't know if you can see how many fruits are on it. I, I can't even count. I have several um, smaller tomato variety is coming and this plant has set quite a bit of fruit so I don't mind that I accidentally topped this I just took it and I put it in some water and I'll root it with my other blueberries tomato suckers and we'll go ahead and plant it then um, these little these are little teeny tiny it's only seems to be setting one tomato on each vine it's a volunteer there's four more tomatoes than I would have had otherwise I really am certain that what I did here was I 
pruned a, t- a determinate variety. So now I feel I need to explain the difference between a determinate and indeterminate variety. This tomato behind me is an indeterminate. So what that means is it would grow and grow and grow until they get too heavy for themselves or they started breaking at the top and couldn't go any further. And then what they would do is start putting out suckers or extra vines. I mean, they already do, but they would do it more vigorously from the side of that main vine. We've spoken before about how nightshades are kind of rambling plants. When you buy a packet of seeds and it says vining, pole, indeterminate, trailing, it's talking about something that is going to take up as much space as you give it. Determinant variety or bushing varieties. I don't know if you can see this, that it's just like stopped at the top. It's not going any further. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Done growing. It will die back and the fruit you get is the fruit you get. It's not just going to continue on forever more as long as it's allowed. So typically with determinate varieties, you let all the suckers grow, let them set all their fruit they want, and you trim the leaves to account for airflow and such, but then you you let it set as much fruit as it can in the short time that it has before it stops growing and dies. I didn't do that. It was a volunteer, so I, I had no way of knowing exactly what was going on until I realized it had stopped. This is about how tall they get, a couple feet tall, 18, 24 inches tall. It's a nice little learning tool right here, but I mean, I wasn't even supposed to know because it was a volunteer. Another determinate plant we have here is this bush bean. This is Liam's little bush bean. It also is a determinate variety. And so what I have been doing is taking the leaves off so that I can see and get to the beans. It's still setting flowers, but it's slowed down quite a bit, so I know it's probably not going to be here too much longer, and I think it will continue giving me fruit as long as I'm harvesting it. But in the case of a determinate tomato, because the fruit that you're eating is mature fruit, it thinks, oh great, I dropped that tomato on the ground. I'm going to have reseeded myself for the next year. A green bean, because I'm pulling it early, the pods are immature the plant thinks oh shoot that just fell off or it got eaten by something i better put out another flower and fruit so this may continue producing a little bit longer you know in concept it's like a cut flower you cut the flower it comes back anyways all these technicalities let's move on with this garden tour i have several sunflowers that are um starting to droop and dry up and I'm gonna leave those for seed for either for microgreens or for more sunflowers next year. The Mexican sunflower is just like this pillar of fluff coming right up out of the garden. I think it's so pretty. And it's also just kind of a monster. I mean, look at all the leaves. I came and trimmed it down and pulled all the large leaves off. It's gonna start pushing out a bunch of, tons of flowers. Aren't those beautiful? This one has just layers and layers and layers of petals. You can kind of see in the center of this flower how many more petals are coming and this will just, the flower will be about this big. Almost like a dahlia. In fact, these are relatives of dahlias, I believe. Look at all of those vines. There's several sets of vines going all the way up. They all have fruit and so I I called it good with this one. I topped it and I think I might have thrown that one into my little jar of um, suckers as well. And then I did the same with this one over here. Um, this one actually has not, it has not done as well setting fruit. There's a lot of flowers, but I don't see a lot of fruits set. It stops about here with this little grape tomato. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on this. If it doesn't continue, I might just even cut it back to where this one is growing and call it good for the year. Oh, sucker. Oh, sucker. Hello, little garden friend. Oh, how cute is that? Black-eyed Susans are some of my favorite flowers, and so I'm loving this, just love it. So I need to actually come and cut some of those back so that it will push out more before the end of the year. 
all of the peppers are doing well. They've um, kind of gotten established and they're pushing out some extra little side shoots. Lots of spicy peppers coming. Um, look at this mass. Oh my goodness, look at this mass of mustard. I came out here the other day and um, trimmed this back. They're so yummy. The flavor is very similar to a radish, but you can tell it's mustard. That's really spicy. This is my rosemary. It, um, it's actually doing a pretty good job for rosemary of establishing itself in this spot. In comparison to that summer savory, there's quite a difference. I mean, nothing can, nothing could ever replace rosemary, but the summer savory is doing a good job as a substitute for now. It wasn't the hottest week of summer. I will say that. It wasn't the absolute hottest, but I think we did reach mid 100, like just over 100 degrees the week that I planted this. And so it, I'm kind of amazed that any of it survived. I lost a couple back here. I expected it, but look at that. The rapini broccolis are kind of just going straight to flower. I'm gonna pinch them back and see if that helps. Um, but you can eat the little flowers. And um, I think that these maybe will head up right around Thanksgiving time. And my next little cocazel squash is loving this spot, um, which is really encouraging to me. Um, I see some potato bugs in there, so I'm gonna have to watch that. Um, but I think all around, it looks pretty good over here in this new spot. Look at this. It's loaded up here. It's setting even more flowers. So I am just so happy with how I ended up doing the tomatillos. It's just good grief. Oh, that's so close. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. So I'm not gonna take it yet, but this, this fruit doesn't really get squishy like a tomato does to tell you that it's ripe. It, it fills up its husks. Yeah, so we have a few that are pretty close to being ripe, but look at those little paper lanterns. Paper lantern fruits. I've got my eye on this brandy wine. Um, it's setting flowers finally up here, but I'm not holding my breath because the other brandy wines also set flowers, but they never made it to a fruiting stage, so we'll see how it goes. It's really disappointing because I love brandy wines. They taste so yummy. So you can see that what I've done with the tomatillos is they have their stakes to support them but then I've also done a string trellis up this tree just like you might see like in a greenhouse so these tomatillos and a couple of the tomatoes the brandy wine back there are on a string I'm gonna do the same with these up the tree probably going in this direction once these tomatillos are done these tomatoes will have some breathing room and I'll be able to plant maybe some winter greens back here um, in the shade earlier than I normally would be because the tomatoes will be able to provide them some shade. Okay, that's a sucker. That's a sucker. I'm excited for tomatoes off of this plant, but um, it also is like the king of suckers. But yeah, there's a few uh, little fruits on here I'm watching for them to grow and this one should be do well enough to make it before the last frost now since it's setting fruits already it won't take that long for them to grow and ripen and finally we have our second um, Mexican sunflower look at that thing um, so I came and I cleaned up these stalks so that we could have some sunlight get through and it was just like completely crowding out everything around it. Yeah, I'm really excited to see these flowers. I think the flowers look different from a normal sunflower, but I guess we'll find out. All right guys, there's the garden tour for this week. I have a few things to plant. I'd like to use this trellis back here behind me to do some peas, and I think I have enough space for it. So we're gonna do that um, and maybe get a few things started in trays if I can. Um, I've got some work to do this next week maintaining and watching for fruits to ripen so yeah hope you enjoyed the garden tour today thanks for hanging out with me live simply
but we don't have me. <laughs> it's a rough morning, you guys. <laughs> okay.